Well, <clears throat> welcome to 2024 Pitwater High reunion slash catch up. And it's Yay! great to see so many people here. Mm. Yeah. Um, we started here at the Royal Motor Yacht Club in about 2015. You go back through the uh, through the book, and I hope everybody signed the book um, uh, to make sure that we know who's here. And I'll put the list of who's here up on the uh, Facebook page uh, later tonight. We're getting on a bit. Some of us may not be here in five years' time. So that's why we have it every year. That was a few years ago. I was talking to the events manager here today about that, and he said, oh, golly, you've been here a long time. He said, um, you know, it's great that you come here every year. I said, well, we're all getting at the age now where um, I'd like to book a monthly. <laughs> <laughs> because um, some of us... <laughs> Hopefully everybody will be here next month. Daily updates. <laughs> we haven't got Tom Burlinson here this year. Um, I said to Tom, if you do come here this year, you can get some lessons on riding the mobility scooters down that hill. <clears throat> and he said, that's that's hard way riding a horse down the snow side of the snowy mountains. <laughs> to save boring everybody stupid, uh, I know you've uh, met up with a lot of people here that you haven't seen for a long time. Um, but to save you having to go through the stories over and over and over, we'll do a quick um, hands up here. Uh, we'll just find out who's got diabetes, right? So that everybody knows. Right, who's had a heart attack? Yeah, uh, so that we don't have to keep doing it. Who's had stents put in? I've had one. Who's um, bald headed? <laughs> hip, re hip replacements, right? Put your hand up so everybody knows. You don't have to tell the story again. Pacemakers, right? If you've got a pacemaker, let us know about that. Frontal um, lobotomy. Ball had that. Mal's put his hand up for that one. Uh, who's had a fall? Um, and some people here have had a fall, and uh, that hasn't turned out real well. Um, I was telling somebody a little earlier on. I'm involved in the Retired Police Association and a couple of years ago, uh, my branch, the Northern Beaches branch, I lost seven members in one year and four of them were as a result of falls. In other words, they had a fall, went into hospital and they didn't come home. So, we uh, could falls, uh, Lex Huggett, still climbing ladders, no more bloody ladders. Um, if you've had a gender re reassignment or something like that, let us know about that. We don't want to hear all about that again. Hernias um, and uh, scars. Just show them once, right? So you don't have to get to show them every time and say, here, I forget who it was, somebody over here said, well, let me show you my hippie, but where are you? We all know where it is. So we get that out of the way, all right? All the sick stuff, medications and all that shit, we're all on the same stuff. Right? So don't worry about it. Okay, moving right along. Uh, make sure you've signed up. For those who've travelled, some have travelled from overseas, some have travelled for the next suburb. For some who live in the next suburb, that was even hard to do. Right? They, they're not here. But for those who travel overseas, Gail, I know you have. Mal, um, direct from um, the Sorbonne in uh, France, and Mal's coming back on Wednesday. Um, but this is an important milestone and it's great to see everybody here. <clears throat> it's 61 years since Pitwater High first opened its doors over here on the side of an old swamp and a mangrove. And um, for those of you in my year that started in 64, 60 years. This is, we've been 60 years since we started at Pitwater High. Not a bad effort and pretty good milestone. Um, Let's have a thought for those of you who, who, or those of us amongst us who didn't make it uh, this year, those that um, have got other problems and those that just didn't make it. Now the plan for this afternoon will be a catch up of course with friends and renewing friendships with, um, with friends, in some cases enemies, that, <coughs> that you had at Potter. Uh, Take heaps of photos on your phone and that I've been running around, I've got photos, i got video and I'll post all of this up on the uh, Facebook page late, later on. Now, Malcolm, who's um, spent quite a lot of time in um, the Pagal 
area of Paris. For those of you who've been there will know what I'm talking about. He hangs around there, the Boulevard de Grecy and uh, places like that. <clears throat> he's going, he's volunteered to um, judge the pole dancing competition, <laughs> which will be for the fellas. <laughs> so make sure you've got clean undies and that before you do that. Malcolm will be doing that. The girls, we've lined up for you. The mud wrestling will be taking place <laughs> over at behind the uh, the high school there. Uh, and um, we'll find somebody to judge that. Stephen Alford, um, we wanted him to judge it because he was famous for coming across the playing fields out of the mud there one morning and disrupting the assembly. But uh, he's unable to be here. Um, also, uh, for, for a little bit of nostalgia, in 1967, um, I went to the first, what I believe is probably the first school social that we had at Pitwater High. It took a while for Stag to get with the program. <laughs> that, you know, there was new, these young people, they needed music that, you know, wasn't of, of his vintage. And so the social that I went to in 1967, and you've seen some photos there of the band that I had, which I think was the first rock band that we had at Pitwater High, the Velvet Image, with uh, Mick Davidson, Steve Marsh, uh, Peter Chick and myself. And at that, um, at that social, we had the first time a rock band, a proper real rock band was there, Phil Jones and the Unknown Blues. Uh, and somebody posted a photo up of them the other day. They had one hit, they were one hit one. And they're still going. They're still playing. They're not playing at retirement villages, they are in the retirement village <laughs> and they play to the other guests. Um, but this afternoon, we've got Rod and Stafford and myself, and we're going to do one song, so we're not going to take over the rest of the afternoon. Um, and the song that we're going to do this afternoon, you should all know the words to it. Oh, okay. G L O R I A. Glory! Oh, so, you guys have got to join in, right? You guys have got to join in. Um, I know that um, uh, Rod wants to say something, uh, but thanks for turning up. I hope you have a great day and some great memories uh, with everybody. We will be here again next year, God willing. Um, and the and the and the years and, and, and years years afterwards. Yeah. Good on you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. I did find in my archive uh, a copy of Nunana Kalori. Now, I remember the school magazine was called Kalori, which meant message stick. I was paying attention. Um, Nanana means small, so it was a small message stick, right? And I found this article, which I think is on the ground right? It's about should bikinis be worn at school swimming parties, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is well known that people and girls are not allowed to wear bikinis to school swimming. But why do we have this ban, and what is the general opinion of it? In this article, we will attempt to discover the opinions of all concerned. We interviewed Mrs. Curtis. Anyone remember Mrs. Curtis? Oh, yeah. Mrs. Curtis. I know his son. He lives around the corner. It did, did indeed. Oh. Yeah. And her answers were that the regulations are always for forbidden bikinis at school swimming. She believed a two piece a two piece would be suitable, but there are some people who always go to extremes <laughs> and it would be impossible to police the size of the costumes. So anyway, it goes on and on. Feel free to read it later. But they go to interview the, 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 the students. Spying a group of fourth year girls lazily sitting, soaking up the afternoon sun on a day like today, no doubt. Um, we descended upon them to discover their secret opinions on the subject in question. This is good journalism, isn't it? <laughs> I think we never wrote this. Is it the person who wrote this here? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, all three owned bikinis and said that if allowed to wear them to school swimming, they would do so. One said that if they wore the bikinis to the beach, boys would see them. While they're swimming, they would not, so why the van? But, um, as the conversation sagged at this point, we left the fourth years and sought the opinions of a couple of second year girls. I wonder who they might have been. I was in second year that year, but um, it's my girlfriend. Um, uh, Sorting through the magnificent splendor of the barn. Remember the barn? Yeah, I thought this was that. Both of us thought that the candies should be allowed at school swimming and they would wear, both wear the candies if allowed. So that carries on now. We crossed the beautiful grey flagstones 
to interview some girl seated in the smooth lawns. Though all agreed that bikinis should be worn, they had some differences concerning the regulations. One suggested that a weekly inspection should be held and the girls wearing unsuitable costumes not be allowed to swim. That's a bit of draconian, isn't it, really? Um, the others thought that it's impractical and said that all or none principles should be applied. Now, here's the kicker. Spying an intelligent-looking third-year boy. Who was in third year in 1966? <laughs> we, we, we stopped him and asked whether he thought the candy should be well worn. He replied, yes. Of course he would. When asked his opinion of one piece, he answered, it all depends which piece. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it around. Feel free to have a look. It's, it's the only copy I've said ever survived. <laughs> So what are we doing?